Hi, I'm Gary Thompson from FX Open UK. In this video, we're going to take a look back at the major stories from this week in the financial markets. I'm going to start talking about crude oil initially. We've seen a decrease of about 12% from the June highs for the price of crude oil futures. This is mainly being led by recession fears, work by the Fed, the Bank of England, the Swiss National Bank in cutting interest rates, indicating potentially a recession in the short to medium term. Also contributing to this decrease in the price of oil has been the use of US strategic reserves. They've been plowing into the market over the past couple of weeks. But if maintained at these sort of levels, we would be looking at a 40 year low for their reserves by October. On top of this, we've seen that China has increased its oil imports from Russia by 55%. And in fact, Russia has now become China's first and major source of crude oil, taking over from the United Arab Emirates. Again, something to look out for. Will we see these decreases in the futures prices coming as far as the petrol pumps? At the moment, certainly here in the UK, we are seeing some really, really record all-time highs, which coupled with inflation is obviously hurting the average person in the pocket. Next up, we're going to look at the key points from Christine Lagarde's speech on the 20th of June. Now, a couple of things came out of that speech. Firstly, she stated that high energy prices and frequent supply disruptions are one of the major issues that they've been facing currently within the EU region. She went on to mention that growth is expected now to be 2.8% in 2022 and 2.1% in 23 to 24. This is seen slightly higher than a lot of other major economies around the world are currently claiming. But hopefully we will see those sort of levels of increases. Something to keep your eyes on coming forwards. Also coming out of Lagarde's speech was what the ECB are intending to do with interest rates. Clearly flag post a 25 basis points increase in July, which would be the first increase in 11 years within the Eurozone. And again, the probability of a further increase in September. Now, we don't know exactly what sort of levels we're talking about. Some commentators are saying as much as 50 basis points perhaps in September. But she did go on to say there'd be a gradual and sustained increase from September onwards if it was deemed necessary. What effect did this have on the euro? Well, we saw a little bit of euro strength in euro dollar futures contracts, although we're still seeing the AUB downlink is still in effect. Generally, there was a bit of positivity for the euro though, and euro strength rebounded. And generally, I think in the markets, we're looking at a little bit more positivity. So that's it for Lagarde's speech and what that's done for the euro. Now we're going to have a little look at the Japanese yen transversing to the other side of the planet. Now, contrary to what we've seen in the US, the UK, the Swiss National Bank and the signposts from the EU, Japan has stated again, they're not looking to increase interest rates. And in fact, they feel that their negative interest rate of 0.1% is something they wish to maintain moving forwards. Now, we've seen increased in interest rates in other areas of the world, and a lot of those are down to inflationary pressures. Um, and obviously, come with some negative effects in terms of mortgage rates and existing borrowing for people. But Japan hasn't been affected in the same way the last couple of years as other major economies. There was no government lockdown, for example. Inflation has been pretty stable there as well, though we are starting to see a slight increase in consumer prices. Now, this would normally indicate hmm, a bit of strength for the currency, but we have seen decreases in the yen. And in fact, the US earlier this week, or the US dollar, I should say, earlier this week, gained 15% in just 2022 on the yet. Again, something else to keep your eyes on. Will we see a change of their monetary policy coming up in the next couple of months? Will they end up jumping on board, if you like, with interest rates rises across the globe? Nobody at this point is quite sure. Finally, it's that time of year. We're heading into summer and we're going to have a little bit of a look at travel stocks over the last week. Now, obviously, we all know travel companies across the globe significantly impacted in the last couple of years due to lockdowns. And this week, and in fact, even for a couple of weeks prior, we have seen here in the UK and in Europe some pretty chaotic scenes at airports. There's been thousands of flights cancelled across the board, including 5,000 at Heathrow, the UK's largest airport, alone. There's been baggage issues. There's been security issues in terms of getting through security checks, a lot of which is being blamed on a lack of employing people back after the past two years of lockdowns, where obviously a lot of people were laid off by the travel industry. Now, despite all of these concerns, and despite this chaotic nature that seems to be occurring across Europe and the UK at the moment, travel companies actually seem to still be doing pretty well. EasyJet, 
which is a very large, probably the largest low budget carrier in the UK, was up 31 and a half points earlier in this week. That's despite this ongoing chaos and the problems and issues that we're facing. On top of that, cruise companies really seem to be coming back to the fore again. Yes, again, they've had a rough couple of years. But if you look at Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings, for example, they went up 10.21% on just one day earlier this week. And in fact, on that same day, Carnival Corporation went up 9.71% and Royal Caribbean up 6.09%. So what are we seeing here? A little bit more confidence coming back into the travel industry as we're all booking holidays again. We're much more able to move freely around the globe. Will the chaos continue? If it does, surely that's going to have a knock on on those prices in the future. That's it for this week. Keep your eyes open in your email boxes next Monday when we'll be sending out our economic calendar and the key stories to look out for.